One heart. Queen of club. Three of spade. Nine of heart. Jack of spade. Six of club. Three of heart. They don't come around. Five of heart. Right there. Five. Oh, what are you guys playing? <coughs> Solitaire. Bingo. Yeah, bingo. It's like you bingo know. Cars. Yeah. We bingo all pay cars. We all pay a dime. Uh huh. And whoever finishes their cards first gets some. I like that color <laughs> hair of yours. It's really that cool. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Wait a minute. <laughs> you ready? Let's go. I'm ready. Five of club. Jack of club. Eight of heart. Two of diamond. Ten of heart. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I am one of the very fortunate people in the world because I worked for UVM for 21 years and they gave me health insurance when I left. So I have good health insurance, but I know a lot of people don't. But I'm very blessed because I haven't had to pay for hardly anything except my prescriptions. And, and what, what about your prescriptions? Are they expensive? Well, they're expensive, but I only have to pay a deductible. Mostly I pay $15 a prescription. So I, I talked to a woman this morning and her son's son broke his leg and they had to go to the bank to get a loan for $6,000 to pay for the leg. And that's awful when the insurance won't even, it was Blue Cross that wouldn't give them the money. And that's awful. So, I've seen both sides. So, Linda, why uh, did you had recent health care, right? You were in the hospital. Tell us about it and whether you were covered by insurance. I went to the emergency room and they found out I, I had a uh, 100 gallstones in my gallbladder and my gallbladder was leaking. So they took this test, oh, but yep, they didn't well, take it there. only until April. <coughs> so I've had this problem for quite a long time. And as far as health care is concerned, I have Medicare. I don't have any other coverage. And I was very fortunate that while I was in the hospital, a lady came in and help me pay this bill by filling out information. And I didn't do that myself. A lady from church who came to help me, she brought me food for five weeks because I couldn't go well. And she helped me do all the paperwork and everything got paid. And I was very fortunate, you know what I mean? So uh, healthcare is important because if you have symptoms, your body's telling you, pay attention to me, get help. But a lot of people ignore symptoms, and you have them for a reason, you know? And um, I don't know what else to say, except it's important. What kind of healthcare system would you like to say for everyone? That people are covered, like, through Medicare and Medicaid. They shouldn't cut Medicaid, and some of the senators now are saying they want to cut Medicaid. Well, they shouldn't cut Medicaid because a lot of people can't afford the other insurance. So that's sort of what I think. Do, do you have Medicare? I have Medicare and I have Blue Cross. Okay. So Blue Cross supplements Medicare, Medicare right. Rate. Medi what does Medicare pay, 80%? No, they pay about 30%. They hardly pay anything. They, they'll pay like $37 for our office visit. Well, office visits cost at least 150 and they don't pay, for, they don't pay their share. So. I think people should be able to go to a hospital or the doctors at any given time for health care. 
I don't think in this day and age people should have to die from something. That there's such so much technology today to save people's lives. And if you go when something is hurting you early on, that's very important. Because some diseases progress rapidly, you know. And um, I think the door should stay open, I, you know, really, for, all, for everybody. You know? Right. Yeah, so you were, you were saying we have to have health care and go from there. And yes, um, all, well, seniors and children have to have health care. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how little money you have. And um, my solution to the problem is that medical school should be free. And we should have people going into medicine who are interested in taking care of people. Uh, right now, they pay so much to get through college, through medical school, through a specialty, and, and then they have to pay that back. So that makes medicine very expensive. And um, I really think that uh, medical school should be free. And I think doctors, when they come out of medical school then, if it's free, they should uh, go into the rural areas where there's uh, not enough doctors and practice for X number of years, like an internship. And then they can go on to their specialty or what. But medicine shouldn't be a way to make money. Hi, I'm Brian Chena. I'm a state representative from Burlington representing House District uh, Chittenden 6-4, which is most of the hill, the hospital, part of UVM, Centennial Field, and a piece of the old North End. And I'm here today to hear from our elders. I'm curious to hear what their concerns are regarding health care. I serve on the House Health Care Committee and uh, we've been doing a lot of work monitoring what's happening in Washington and um, monitoring what protections we might need to put into place if there were changes to the Affordable Care Act. And um, so I'm curious to hear, you know, I'm here really to listen to our elders and to hear their voices and hear their concerns and answer any questions they might have. Um, and also to reassure them that we're gonna fight you know, for them to continue to get their benefits in their health care. Thank you for your attention. Uh, the reason that we want to speak with you today is that uh, there is a serious threat that many of us are under and that is, I think, a, a serious threat for seniors especially of cuts to Medicaid and Medicare uh, and what the National Republican Party has tried to do to health care in this country. Um, so just a quick question, how many people in this room in some way use Medicaid? Medicaid and or Medicare. Medicaid, Medicare, everybody. Okay. We've been organizing on a local level to pressure our governor, Phil Scott, to stand up publicly and push back against the national Republican attacks on health care. And we've had some success in pushing him to take a stronger stance and stand up for the health uh, of Vermonters. We don't want to just stand here and talk at you the whole time. Mostly what we wanted to do was to be able to listen and hear stories and experiences of the people in this room uh, and, and learn from you as to what benefits you've gotten from the current healthcare system and what are your concerns? But we know there's a lot of threats still to healthcare, both the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid, and Medicare. Um, there are plans by Republicans in the House of Representatives that would turn Medicare into a voucher. So they would hand you a voucher for X number of dollars that we know is not enough money to actually cover the care you need. They also want to turn Medicaid into a block grant program, so a state would only get a certain amount of money. And the reason they're doing that is to make cuts. So we know that Vermont, for example, wouldn't have the money they need to take care of our current Medicaid, Medicaid population. So Isaac asked you how many of you rely on Medicaid and Medicare. My other question is how many of you use the community health centers of Burlington for your health care? So the Community Health Center of Burlington is a federally qualified health center. Um, they get funding from the federal government in order to operate. 
They work on a sliding fee scale, so you can get coverage regardless of your ability to pay. One in four Vermonters, which is the most of any state in the country, one in four Vermonters get their health care from a federally qualified health center. Senator Sanders has been one of the biggest supporters in Washington of that program, and he wants to expand it, actually doubling the number of people who can access health centers for their care, which provide high quality, low cost primary care services. Thank you all for having us. That was a pleasure. My understanding that was this health center was pushed by Bernie to be here, uh, which I'm very grateful for because I use it. But I also heard that he, there was supposed to be another one that he was going to try to get further inland. A, a different location, you mean? Yeah. Um, a second one. I see. So you are that, and I heard that few years ago. Okay, so Senator Sanders' role is really to make sure that there's funding available so that health yeah. centers can open. Yeah. Marsha, there is another one. Yeah, it's there is on another one? Yes, I passed it. It's down, um, you know where Staples is? Yeah. It's down around in that area. Oh, it is. And there's yeah. also one for um, teenage teens, homeless teens, which I think is on yeah. Pearl Street. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which state? Burlington has like five locations now. So there's Riverside, there's the one on Pearl Street, there's one on Pine Street. I don't know a lot of money being talk. Yeah, she said that yeah, there is one uh, like uh, near her house. Oh, good. Uh, we have a question over here. Yeah. I have a comment. I, I, I don't only have a question, I have kind of a statement. Mm -hmm. First of all, I don't think that Medicare and Medicaid provide enough services for people. And I think that needs to be increased. And my one of the ways it would seem that we could help our health care be cheaper is to make it cheaper for the doctors to become doctors. And maybe we should have an organization who uh, sponsors doctors and then they go out and work so many years before they start their specialty. And so that they don't have this huge debt. And um, uh, there was one other thing, and it slipped my mind, but um, it has to do with uh, dental, I think, because I really think dental is as important. If you get dental infections, you're prone to get heart problems and all kinds of things. So I really think dental is a very important thing. Um, that's, I guess, what I, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. If the universal health care passes, will Washington senators and congressmen be paying the same as us? We could save a lot of money there. They should be on the same program we are. So, members of Congress right now... Oh, sorry. True. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, members of Congress right now um, receive FEHB which is the federal employee insurance benefit. So they get their coverage through Blue Cross or United Healthcare or uh, other things that federal employees are subject to. They make us feel like when we get our Medicare benefits, that's something we've purchased through the years. We've worked for that. Absolutely. And we're made to feel like it's a freebie and it's a handout and oh, you don't deserve this, you should be happy with whatever you get. Uh, and that's not true. We, we've paid into it. Absolutely. Without question. They, they should be made to live on Social Security for one month. And, and yeah. The 40s and 50s, we worked at 13. So from, thir from the age of 13 until the age of 66, I paid into Social Security mm -hmm. and, and these benefits that I should be getting, mm -hmm. and I do not wish to see any of those cuts. Could you talk a bit more about prescription drugs and what what is possible? Because right now, unless you have supplemental insurance, you pay a fortune. Oh, sorry. No, I don't have one question. <laughs> yeah. So they are under Medicaid and Medicare, so they do not pay anything. So is is this different with the Americans who is already here, like um, the one who is born here, that they have to pay even if they have Medicaid or Medicare? 
So Medicare is something that you pay into as you're working, and then when you turn 65, you have access to benefits. No, the uh, senior. And then, okay. Oh, and Medicaid, Medicaid can, if you're if you're low income, if you have income eligibility, Medicaid can sort of fill in the difference. So right now, even if you have Medicare, um, there's typically a there's a a monthly premium that you pay, and there's also usually about a 20% coinsurance for certain services. So you can buy for an additional cost supplemental insurance, um, but you're still, even once you've earned the benefit, you're still paying every month, and then you're paying additionally for the services that you need. I know they do not have coinsurance because they do not have to pay anything. I don't have to pay anything, too. Yeah, there are, why I yeah, there, I, I didn't know, like, it's guys income dependent. Yeah, it, well, I pay a dollar or two dollars, so yeah, it's, it's what they pay. I mean, yeah. they do not have any questions. So people who are right, they, they have, have Medicaid and Medicare. Yeah, there's a lot of seniors that are low income that don't have to pay more than a dollar or two. Oh, I have a question for them. I have a question for the elders. So what I'm hearing is that you currently don't have to pay anything. Or just so you know, I'm Brian Sheena. I'm a representative. On the state level, I'm on the health care committee. Welcome to Jim Brian. No, I'm on the state state level. I'm on the health committee. I'm on the health committee. What helps us um, is when we can tell stories to to prove why we need things. And I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how it would affect you if you lost your health care benefits in any way, and maybe what you're currently getting. What kind of services are you currently getting that make improve your life? Do they, they don't have any what? Any no income. What kind of care does Medicaid allow you to receive? Yeah, but there is a limit of five hundred dollars, which I know, and then for dental, and if they risk five hundred, they have to pay extra. <laughs> And she's saying that she is under medication, so she has to take like three the different types of medicines. Like she, after she goes from here, she has to take three medicines, and after that, then she has to take three because she does have oxygen as well. And if the medicine is not there, then she like it will be very tough for her. Well, aren't we here in Vermont? I think we're one of the better places because we've had Medicaid and Medicare you know, my entire life. So I think that what's gonna be sad is low income, I don't know about immigrants, what they're gonna do about that, but low income people, the less you have, it's not gonna really affect me, but it's gonna affect people that are like in the middle, and that's not okay. I think low income folks are also, would be under threat if there are the major cuts. Yeah, so I think one of the challenges is the reason Vermont is able to cover as many people with Medicaid as we do is because we get funding from the federal government. Yeah, and that's the and point. so when that is cut, if the middle class people will get no low, low income people will How? get cut because if the federal government only gives us a certain gives the state yeah. of Vermont a certain pot of money yeah. and says you guys need to figure this out. Yeah. Um, the state is going to have to make choices as to who gets care and who doesn't. Unfortunately, there's. There are these uncertainties because of the national picture. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just, it's good that we're like hearing this and that I think that people stay involved is really crucial. One thing I want to mention, which I'll, I'll pass out, is we just have pretty simple like healthcare cards where we're collecting stories from folks, which can be used uh, to both pressure Governor Scott and uh, legislators to help move forward with statewide programs like universal primary care mm -hmm. um, and to 
to figure out how we can actually move toward a more universal and accessible healthcare system in the state of Vermont, where it's there's more politically possible here than in the national picture. So I would uh, love to have anyone who has a story they want to share to actually put it down on one of these cards, and we can follow up and continue the conversation and keep organizing to protect what we do have. I, I, I think I heard that lunch is going to be served soon, but I want to address your question about drug pricing. Sorry. We so there are many solutions to lower the drug prices here in the U.S. A couple that the senator um, has been working really hard on are um, importation of lower cost drugs from Canada and other countries. Um, the Canadian government and Canadian people pay about 40% less per person than the U.S. pays. And it's the same exact drugs, and you know, Canada is so close to here, and so many other states in the country would be very simple to get the drugs here. So the center has a bill to do that. Um, another um, policy would be to allow uh, Medicare to negotiate drug prices within the um, fishery drug benefit program within Medicare, which could drastically lower prices as well. Uh, for those of us who uh, do have chronic illness, <coughs> I hit the, the donut hole early in the early summer. Fortunately, I'm on a state plan that helps me. Uh, I'm proud. I hate to say I'm on welfare, but as soon as you get a Vermont State uh, Farm, the V Farm helps. We are considered Medicaid. Uh, I still have my own home. I pay out. Uh, I'm on very limited income, and I pay out uh, about 25 percent of my income in medical with Medicare and uh, a, a plan with AARP that I don't have any deductibles because I find in the long run that is saving me a lot more money with no deductibles, no co-pays. I, I have some co-pays with the state. But by staying in my own home, I'm not being subsidized in housing. I'm saving the government money there. How is that going to affect people like us who are fortunate? I wouldn't be able to live if I couldn't have my own home because I wouldn't be able to afford housing anymore with taxes and, uh, and maintenance and all that goes with that. My lawn hasn't been mowed in three weeks because I had <laughs> surgery on my hand and I can't pull the cord on the lawnmower anymore. So it, it, there's those services that we still have to maintain. And how is that going to affect us? 